It is important to us to do our best to keep everyone safe. We regularly, we are regularly monitoring COVID incidents in our area. Currently, thankfully, they are relatively low, and so masks are optional, but strongly encouraged for those who have traveled recently or prefer to wear them. Should the incident rate move out of the green safe zone, we'll be sure that it, we hope it doesn't happen. We will resume the policy that everyone except those with medical conditions should remain masked during our services. Masks are available for anyone who needs them. We are ready to begin our service, so please grab a seat, silence your cell phones, and come to stillness so we can begin the recording. <laughs>
Welcome to the United Church of the Valley. As a progressive Christian community, um, we believe that following the path and teachings of Jesus can lead to an experience of the sacred and the oneness and unity of all life. By now, you probably realize that UCB isn't like most churches. We proudly, we're proudly just a little bit different. We are a congregation as unique as you. Not only that, UCBers embrace what makes us each different. UCB is a community in which individuals can live out their inner callings to a variety of ministries. Some collect school supplies for foster children being serviced by Walden Family Services. Some collect supplies to help combat homelessness, supported by the Southwest Action Group. Some raise money for the international relief efforts in Chaka Seca, Nicaragua. Some participate in difficult questions group to explore those questions and ideas that may not always be comfortable. Some help plan and lead worship. Some organize our garage sale, while others work with summer camp at Pilgrim Pines in Yucaipa, California. So you can see we may be small, but we are mighty in our commitment to services, to serve others. We are a welcoming community where the diverse groups of each are um, cobbled together in the spirit to produce a vibrant congregation, sharing God's love with one another in the world. We are excited that you have decided to join our little congregation that could today and look forward to getting to know you better. There is always a place for you in, if you feel like the desire to participate. Welcome, everybody. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Uh, right now, we're going to sing a song called Breathe In. It's a meditative song. And uh, it was in mindfulness. So, mindfully, we'll be here doing one thing. Now, we're going to sing this song together and to breathe at the same time. Welcome. Hello, you guys. Come in just in time. Look at we keep drawing the circle wide. Yes. <laughs> Let's draw the circle wider still. Let's <laughs> have everybody with us. Yeah, well, look here. <laughs> it's pretty nice to we were like really far apart. We were like, so good to wait for everybody. So good. We, we plan on <laughs> So good. We plan on planning on Is it a little bit more? Yeah, you can go ahead and down. Hey, honey. I'm going to spin you off. Hi, honey. How are you feeling? Thank you so much. Sorry for the ladies. Yeah. Oh, we are today. We just getting started. We are just getting started. You see the tension inside. It's okay. You feel that. All in its time. <laughs> All in its best time. So feel yourself breathe in. Take it out. And breathe out. And when you breathe out the next time, just feel your shoulders relax just a little bit. And maybe your neck can relax. Nothing to do, nowhere to go, but to be here right now. 
And together we just call on all the all the many names of God. And that love may be here in our midst. We breathe in divine presence and we let go of any obstacles we can. We breathe in the small and deep in the center of our feet. We breathe in power, strength, courage, and the willingness to say yes to life.
Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me in that morning as well. It's so common. And I like to start a poem, even though so many things are going on. You know, um, I want to speak today as, as our pastoral counselor. And uh, not as a reverend, which is appropriate because I'm not a reverend. <laughs> I'm actually a marriage and family therapist. And that's my side gig. So, uh, and today we're talking about mental health. And talking about mental health is really easy for me. But I know that's not the case for many. Topics around mental health are still stigmatized. And many have a hard time admitting with, that they're struggling with mental health, especially anxiety and depression. And gosh, how couldn't we be? We just hear the news. You know, when we, however many millions of years ago or hundreds of thousands of years ago, you know, human beings lived in a band of about 50 people. And so the news that you heard was basically about 50 folks. And now how many billion people are on here? And then we share in the hard news of billions of people. And that's hard. It's hard to manage. And not only that, we have our own struggles that are going on. All, all of us just looking at the news, so much the tornadoes, you know, we are hearing all the time about the things that are happening in other countries, still what's happening in Ukraine. And um, that's just one of the countries that's having so much civil unrest. What's happening in our own societies that we are so divided. And I know that any of you can think of people that you love, but you know that you can't really talk with anymore because it's so hard or politics have divided us so much. So we are going to um, read now our scripture. And it comes from Luke, verses 12, 22 to 32. And he, meaning Jesus, said to his disciples, therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you shall eat, nor about your body and what you shall put on. For life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you by adding anxious anxiety can add a cubit to your span of life? If then you are not able to do as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet tell you, even if Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so close the grass, which is alive in the field today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will God clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be of anxious mind. For all the nations of the world seek these things, and your God knows that you need them. Instead, seek the kingdom, and these things shall be yours as well. Fear not, little flock. Barter's your God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Amen. I love these verses. God cares about us even more than the birds. And this is indeed truly beautiful to think about. However, we have this way of turning beautiful messages against us. Mm -hmm. And friends can do the same thing. You admit that you're depressed or anxious, and some well-meaning friend will send you a Bible verse, perhaps this one. <laughs> and then we feel guilty for our overwhelming feelings. It's just best to keep them to ourselves, we think. Or better yet, let's just deny that we have them. How many times have I heard someone say, I feel depressed. And I look at my life and I say to myself, I have no reason to feel this way. Well, let's just put that one to rest. Because if you're feeling a certain way, there is a real, a, a real reason why you are feeling that way. I promise. You just may not understand why at that moment. But there is a reason and not one to be invalidated. And let's bring up one reason that we all have. COVID-19 has brought some pretty major changes to how we've lived our lives. 
We've just been through a major time of uncertainty and alteration of daily routines, financial pressures, and a requirement of social isolation like we have never experienced before. And in spite of our best efforts, many of us caught COVID. Anybody here not? <laughs> and even though the infection cleared months ago, or for Ruth, you know, an hour ago, <laughs> something doesn't feel right. You may still have some physical symptoms lingering. You may find yourself struggling, struggling with seemingly easy tasks. You may experience fatigue that makes moving from the bed to the kitchen feel like an enormous accomplishment. Or you may have a feeling of dread, a nervousness you can feel your heart pounding, maybe constant worries that keep you from sleeping at night. Anybody experience that? Look, at no one wants to admit. <laughs> it's okay, guys. We can admit it. That's all right. You're not alone. And we know that the pandemic has significantly affected our mental health, isolation, loneliness, unemployment, and the loss of people we love. The prescription of antidepressants has spiked. Intimate violence has increased, intimate partner violence, and suicidal thoughts are on the rise, especially in young adults. Thank you, Ruth, for the slides that you put up there today that had some of those statistics in there. And we all seem to worry about getting sick, and, and we wonder how long pandemic fears will last. You see, it's how long will the pandemic last? How long will the pandemic fears last? <laughs> Information overload, rumors, misinformation can make our life feel out of control and make it unclear what to do. And compared with before the pandemic, surveys now show a major increase in the number of U.S. adults who report symptoms of stress, anxiety, depression, and insomnia. Some people have increased use of alcohol or drugs, thinking that can help them cope with their fears about the pandemic, so maybe for a moment, right? But in fact, the use of these substances can make the anxiety and depression even worse. In many ways, right now, the world seems as if it's getting back to normal, but for many, the effects live, in, live on. And if you're somebody here today has been suffering from anxiety or depression, there is a reason, and it's not your fault. Nor is it due to a lack of faith, might I add. Mm -hmm. oh, little yeah, that <laughs> sloppy little sentence. <laughs> Here's a little known fact. My great uncle was a bona fide faith healer and tent evangelist. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Jack Coe was an American Pentecostal evangelist, nicknamed the man of reckless faith. He was one of the first faith healers in the United States with a touring tent ministry after World War II. <laughs> my great, my, what is that? My great uncle. He knew Oral Roberts. A little name dropping. And he was so impressed by the size of Roberts' revival tent, he actually went to one of Oral Roberts' tent meetings to measure it, and then he ordered a larger one. <laughs> This is a little fun fact. <laughs> and I bet if he couldn't heal you, you know he would just turn it right around and blame it on you. It's just a common wrong idea that our lack of faith keeps us sick. It's no wonder that we walk around with guilt because we're sick, depressed, or anxious. There's hardly any other thing that gets my ire up as to when someone is given a misunderstanding that if you had enough faith, you'd be cured of your physical or mental illness. Some people use these beautiful scriptures in the Bible to battle us. Anyone been beaten with this one? Sometimes it feels like that, doesn't it? How about this one? If you have the faith of a mustard seed, you could tell this mountain to get up and move and it would move. Give little faith. This has been used to make us feel terrible. 
Is it being sick is our fault and is due to us not having enough faith to make ourselves well? And I do believe this is an immature understanding of this scripture. You know, if everybody prayed for a green light, we would be in a world. <laughs> You are so funny, Darcy. It's right about up at like two in the morning. Because it doesn't sleep. It's two in the morning. Faith to me has nothing to do with changing an outer situation. The belief that if I pray hard enough, my outer situation will change, or I will be healed from this ailment, or my depression will magically be removed. I would never argue by the day with by, by the way with the idea of a miracle. I'm sure that many things have happened in your life and mine that are unexplainable, wonderful things. <clears throat> but I don't believe those happen because I believed it enough. I did not will it into existence. Faith has to do with outcomes that are beyond my control. Faith is not that I believe that I would make a mountain stand up and move. It's the idea that if the mountain didn't move, that that must be the way it ought to go. Faith to me means that whatever the outcome, I can believe that it is what needed to happen in order for the greatest good to be done, not just for my life alone, but for the good of all. And when there is an outcome that I don't like, it would be natural for me to feel very sad about that. However, it is not a betrayal by God. And it doesn't mean I didn't pray hard enough. Oh, ye of little faith is meant to prompt us from having just a little faith to an expansive, mature faith, which means that I trust that all outcomes are being managed by a power greater than mine, a power that's based in love. And that just fits better with my idea of a loving God, way better than the idea that I need to be ashamed of my physical or mental illness that wasn't magically healed. When we're suffering, we pray for healing, and we're more likely to heal when we believe we are loved rather than we feel ashamed. And shame, by the way, grows in secrecy and in silence. And it has a harder time growing in an environment of empathy. So if you suffer from physical or mental illness or addiction, we douse it with empathy and we share it with those who have insight and can respond with compassion. And we watch the voices in our own head and we talk kindly to ourselves as if we were talking with someone we love. Just know that a well-lived life has both pleasure and pain in it. And sometimes, sometimes we just don't feel good. And maybe if we could let go of the idea that it's because of our weakness or failing, it'd be easier to admit it and ask for help. Maybe if we admit it to someone, they would also be able to admit it to us. We intimately and emotionally connect much easier in our frailties than we do in our victories. So we have lots of reasons why we'd be suffering from depression, right? We just went through quite a few. But what about anxiety? How many people feel like they have had increased anxiety in the last two years? How about for a long time? Yeah. And I was just going to say that. I have long anxiety. Yeah. I love it. you. See? Mm -hmm. right there. Well, you know, with or without COVID, how many of us feel like we're just anxious a lot of the time? Right. You see, we are not alone. Unfortunately or fortunately, Depending on the situation, we are hardwired for anxiety. Think of this. You're walking along this mountain path when you hear rustling in the bushes. Right? That's what we do. Our body tenses up because we're geared to constantly assess for safety and danger. When our ancestors went out looking for lunch, they had to pay even more attention to not becoming lunch. <laughs> and if you miss lunch one day, you could try again the next day. If, however, you miss the saber-toothed tiger, that was it for you. Another scenario, okay? You go to the store. Think of this. And on the way out, someone holds the door for you. And you think, how nice. 
what a nice person. I need to open the door more for other people. That felt so good. And then you get in the car, and on the way home, somebody cuts you off, you have to slam off on your brakes. And when you get home, which incident will be the one you remember? Is it how you remember? Mm -hmm. Right? We are evolutionarily designed to remember the negative. And this proclivity to remember the negative and forget the positive is called negativity bias. Truthfully, there are just as not as many saber-toothed tigers out there today as there used to be. You know, something to be grateful for and your gratitude list. <laughs> and we can stand to relax. Dr. Rick Hansen is a psychologist who specializes in the neuroscience of things. And he says that we are step one. If you're too young, that's the nonstick pen. <laughs> <laughs> So we are Teflon for positive experiences and we are Velcro for negative. <laughs> Makes sense, right? They just stick to us as super. So how do we change this? And, and I'm going to give just an easy way. And it's just taken right from Rick Hansen's website. By the way, if you look him up, he's got fun podcasts out there and they're short. You know, they're like 20 or 30 minutes. Um, so if you want to find ways to be able to increase some of the positivity in your life, that's a good way to go. Here's what he says. He says, look for good facts and turn them into good experiences. Good facts include positive events like the taste of good coffee or getting an unexpected compliment. And when you notice something good, let yourself feel good about it. I don't need to cling to it. I just need to let it in. Let it fill your body. Try to do it half a dozen times a day. And there are a lot of opportunities to notice good events. And when you do, just take it for like 30 seconds or so. You know, they're not long. Just, just hold on to it for 30 seconds. Really let it sink in. It's private. You know, no one needs to know that you're taking in the good in that moment. But you can do it on the fly in daily life or at special times of reflection. Um, and he says just before falling asleep, Sleep is a time that our brain is especially receptive to new learning. So when you're falling asleep, if you want to think of some of the things that you're grateful for for the day, some of the good things, that's a great routine to get into. That really does change our brain. We have our brains, are, are, uh, it's called neuroplasticity. And when we practice this positive, um, what ends up happening is we end up feeling more positive. You know, another little fun fact, um, and I think it might have been Rick Hansen also, he said that in order for you to feel like you live in a, a positive environment, that the ratio of positive to negative needs to be five to one. Isn't that amazing? How many times do you so think you're critical to your partner, right? Five to one. <laughs> you forgot to do the dishes again last night. Oh, thanks for putting gas in the car. <laughs> Thank you for going to work and bringing home some money. That's very helpful. <laughs> you know, all of these things that we could, if we just focus on, look at our children. Oh my gosh, your room. Oh, you know, it's really hard to go to school. I'm super glad that you get up and go every day. <laughs> Thank you for helping your sister. I really appreciated that you guys were quiet in the car today. I just needed a little bit of stress. That's what happened. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here. I'd be so lonely without you. <laughs> Another way to do this, by the way, is with the practice of mindfulness. It's why I love starting church with this song we did with Breathe In. Just do one thing and put your whole focus on that thing and do it without judgment. Pause. No, really, right now, let's just pause. Just stop. Feel your shoulders. Are they tight? Are they up around your neck? Feel your neck. Is it tense? Feel your face. Notice your breath. And here we drop in 10 seconds right into now. And now do an experiment with me, everybody. Put your hand out just like this. And don't look at your hand. 
it's there. And without looking at it, just try to feel the sensations in your hand. You will feel pulsing, maybe some tingling. Maybe you can feel one or two fingers more than the other. You can feel the air on your hand, perhaps. Your palm will feel different than the back of your hand. Okay, put your hand down. Oh, you were noticing probably the muscle <laughs> holding up your neck. <laughs> Did you notice that the whole time that you were in your hand, you were not in your head? <laughs> that is a, just a magical thing. That the whole time when you drop into your body and you feel it, whatever story we're spinning in our head will just be gone just for that moment. And that's what we practice little moments of it at a time. Anxiety will drop. It's a rule out there. It's called the 90 second rule. That if uh, it, it, it was done at, um, I think it was UCLA. Um, but what they did is they put an MRI and, uh, on, and looked at somebody's brain stuff going on and worked them up until some story, anger, whatever big emotion there was. And then they said, okay, now drop in your body and just feel the symptoms right now, your physiological symptoms in your body and name them. Oh, okay. Chest is tight. Stomach feels sick. My throat is tight. My pits are sweating. My hands are tingling. And then when you notice and drop in your body, what ends up happening is all of this comes. It takes 90 seconds for those chemicals in our brain to calm down. And then I promise you, 90 seconds later, it may not have solved your problem, but I bet if anything, you'll be approaching whatever it is differently and most likely better, more effectively. And I want to tell you that if it's harder to you than this, and if this did not help, and if your mind did not stop, don't feel guilty. And don't blame yourself. These suggestions can be helpful, but sometimes they're not. And if they aren't, there are other ways. And just know that physiologically, there's a reason for you to feel the way you do. It's okay. Just talk about it. And you'll find that you're an one. And what about sadness? How do you know if you're sad or depressed? Isn't it normal to feel sad? Well, sure it is. And generally, sadness has some type of a reason we can point to. When we experience loss, we will feel sad. And when we lose someone or something significant, we will feel grief. And many of us have lost loved ones in the last few years and are grieving or have been through grief. Usually, the symptoms will show improvement after about six months. And with most of the symptoms resolving within one or two years, I just want to give you a baseline, you know, but not everybody is the same. Sometimes more, sometimes less. There's no right way, but it's kind of nice to know the baseline because if you're feeling stuck, we want to know, you know, because grief can turn into depression. So I want you to watch for these symptoms in yourself in your family and in your friends. Feelings of emptiness or hopelessness. Loss of interest or pleasure in most or all of your normal activities. Sleep issues like insomnia or sleeping too much. Tiredness and lack of energy, so even small tasks take extra effort. It feels like walking through molasses. Changes in weight, either a reduced appetite and weight loss or increased food cravings and weight gain. Both. Mood changes like increased anxiety, agitation or restlessness, irritability, outbursts of anger, and watch for that in the children because children show depression through irritability. Also, slowed thinking, speaking, or body movements. Feelings of worthlessness or guilt or fixating on past failures or of self-blame. If you have trouble thinking, concentrating, or making decisions and remembering things. 
and surely frequent are recurrent thoughts of death, suicidal thoughts, suicide attempts. So watch for these. They are symptoms of depression. And please don't take the symptoms lightly. And if you're beginning to have a few of those, you may still be able to turn it around before it becomes full blown. Here's how. You try to get back into your routines, uh, like taking a bath or a shower, having your morning coffee or tea, watering your plants, making calls you used to. Make your bed. Believe it or not, make your bed. A study was done that uh, just that was the only change that was made for people who were depressed is get up and make your bed after six weeks improvement. That's on that one. Get outdoors. Exercise. Start a morning routine that includes some form of spiritual study, prayer, and meditation. Practice gratitude as you're able to. Another thing that people can beat us with. Depression will have a hard time growing in an atmosphere that includes these things. And if you're unable to do these things, do not feel guilty. It is not your fault. Depression hits motivation. And when we become wounded in those areas, it's hard to change. And it is the most courageous thing to talk to someone and to seek help. Tell a friend, find a therapist, talk with your doctor. Maybe an antidepressant would be a good choice. Sometimes that helps kick up the motivation to be able to get back into routines and healthier behavior. You are not failing when you ask for help. So just rounding up, you guys, anxiety and depression, it does kick us out of the knees. And sometimes life just gets very hard. And if you're having a hard time, please reach out to your beloved community here at UCB. Be loved. Allow yourself to be loved. Oh. At the United Church of the Valley, we seek to be inclusive of all people. We strive for peace and justice among all people. We strive to protect and restore the integrity of the earth. We commit to a path of lifelong learning, compassion, and love. We invite you to be part of this mission. We thank you for your generosity. There is a collection plate on the organ over here. Um, for those here in um, person, and of course, all of us can make a donation by going to our website, ucbchurch.org. Where you will, where you can use either Venmo or PayPal. Of course, you can always mail checks to our mailing address. This, we have another uh, person that most of you don't know in our quilt group. It's Mary Martinez, and I think I, I think I met her at Joanna's, and then um, she she quilts over at the Catholic Church. And I thought, anyway, she made this quilt for her friend David Rothman, and that's her daughter-in-law's um, father. He had back surgery a few weeks ago, and he's been a highway patrolman and pilot and um, had a wrecked back. But anyway, she made this. So we want to say a prayer. We to the other side for this agree. And what we'll do, we'll put it over, we'll move the canvas with things and um, put it over there. And after church, please tie it and say a prayer for this for David, and then I'll take it over to her later this week. Let us pray. Dear Lord, 
help David Rothman know that he is in our prayers and help with his healing. Um, for if we know it takes a long time to recuperate from that surgery. But be with him and know that he will know that um, we are all praying for him and his um, recovery. And uh, Okay, we're going to do joy and concern. In our beloved community, people care about one another and share their joys and sorrows and concerns. Keeping abreast of what is going on in each other's lives helps us to know that we truly are a part of a beloved community. Every week we gather the joys and concerns of our community through email so we can share them together today. They will be shown on the screen as I read them aloud. After each joy or concern, I will say, together we pray, and you will respond, hear us, O God. Ongoing prayers for the Hayden's friend, Jennifer, who is continuing her cancer treatment. The, the update on that is not, not good. It switched from Kaiser to UCSD. Uh, at first, things were moving along. And now the doctor seemed to be stumped. Mm -hmm. uh, not quite sure. So they're looking to make another community to you know, a facility that's that specialized in cancer and cancer and mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, together we pray. Um, continuing prayers for the healing of our Zoom friend, Lenny, who is home rehabbing after the second surgery to repair her severely broken arm. I don't think she had a second surgery, just so you know, but they have decided, you know, said that she needs a shoulder replacement now on top of everything else. So um, the, the thing was that they put the screws in, in her arm to fix the, the her arm, but osteoporosis has the screws just came out. Mm -hmm. And so now they're going to be replacing her shoulder. So it's just, um, just keep her in your prayers. Mm -hmm. Together we pray. Continuing prayers for the Neil Far, for Neil Far and the whole Far Tune family as he continues his cancer treatment. Mm -hmm. Together. We pray. Yeah. Uh, continuing prayers for Steve and for Linda. Together we pray. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, one more. Okay, I can't. Prayers for peace, direction, and strength for those struggling with depression. Yes. Okay. Together, Together we pray. We pray. Here it is. Uh, I um, my uncle um, just found out he has cancer. Um, we don't know what stage it's in yet, but he needs prayers. He's um, fighting and hoping. We're all hoping and fighting for the best. So. Together we pray. Prayers uh, um, for people who are trying to um, adopt babies that they have the opportunity presents itself. Together we pray. Uh, uh, prayers for a friend of mine who's having major surgery on the 23rd. If you could just offer us a, a prayer or a positive thought in her direction. Together we pray. Prayers for a mother of her uncle. They found us stage four cancer and the morning care didn't let them know. So he's dying in the very last stage as well. I'm sad. Again, we pray. Here. So the school at which I teach uh, this past week had a second, not quite a lockdown situation, but a shelter in place. Uh, again, just like the first one was maybe two weeks ago. Uh, it was uh, students making threats on social media. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of pain out there and a lot of fear and anxiety for our whole Bell Mountain Middle School community. Mm -hmm. Together we pray. Uh, 
Um, prayers for a peaceful election and I am following it that we can um, keep our democracy peaceful and thriving. Yes. Yeah. Together we pray. Yeah. Uh, my friend from high school, um, close friend Cheryl Doe, she had knee surgery, I think, in May. But she had she, the knee is okay, but she still doesn't feel good. They found something in the lungs, but I don't know what it is yet. Yes. But together we pray. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody online? Yeah, right here. Um, well, I was a state of being regulation too next week, but um, <clears throat> I'm driving up to see my uncle and aunt for Thanksgiving. And um, my dad, who lives one town over, hasn't spoken to me in two years since I came out. So I don't know if I will see him or not. Um, my mom I convinced to see me to for coffee, but. I don't know if I'll see him, so just prepare for that because it's mm -hmm. scary and hard. Mm -hmm. Together we pray. Glory. 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 Yeah. Um, Thanksgiving for it. Um, the fact that Fred is improving and has been moved to a rehab facility in uh, Marietta and prayers that he's going to settle in there and uh, improve rapidly and gain as much strength back as he can. And, See where he is able to uh, live on an ongoing basis. And together we pray. Here's the Yeah, the joy. Um, so let me know that I started a new job for an after school pro pro program. And we had our first two full days with kids. Um, and it was so much fun. It was, I nearly did me in, but uh, <laughs> it was so much fun. We took the kids to the zoo, we took them to Safari Park. We had animal activities, we had a reptile die out, and um, kids who never gotten to, you know, do those things wow. before got to do that. And everyone came home safely, um, even though I forgot the medication school and the assistant principal had to drive out and bring them to the <laughs> Everyone survived and had a great time. And um, I'm just so grateful to be in that situation. Together. <laughs> I want to let you know my nephew. It's been almost a year since I lost my brother, but his nephew is the a family that was excluded from him because of my brother is now to you know talking together and helping him out because he really needs help and trying to find assistance for him. Someone coming in to make sure he's doing okay because there's a learning disability but he's not he can live with his girlfriend and stuff but they still need extra help so we're trying to find out that the family's coming together with uh, another family and his girlfriend's family so that that's a happy thing together we pray there's uh, yeah um steve and lenny say thank you and Jen says, concern, my nephew by choice was in a terrible accident last Friday. Who is that? Jen. Jen's nephew. Okay. Was in a terrible accident last Friday. His wife will be having the life support machines turned off this afternoon. Please keep the entire family, especially his two young daughters, in your prayers. Together we pray. Here is Edna says, buy raffle tickets. <laughs> and I have all the things. Is that a joint yeah. concern? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, it's a commandment. It will be a joint because it helps finance our jobs today. And the, the prayer group, you know, to, to give folks to these people that, you know, to help them know that they're, they're not alone. Mm -hmm. So it's a joint. Mm -hmm. together. Okay, let it share in a moment of holy silence. No matter how we understand prayer, we find that it is good to pray. 
Together we hold these names and words, spoken and unspoken, in the spirit of concern, a spirit of joy, a spirit of connection, and now in a spirit of prayer. Oh, great love, thank you for living and loving in us and through us. May all that we do flow from our deep connection with you and for all beings. Help us become a community that vulnerability um, shares each other's burdens. Listen to our heart's longings for the healing of our world. We offer these prayers in all the holy names of God. Let us pray together in one voice the prayer Jesus taught us, taught his disciples, first in the common group, and then connect us to our grandparents and great grandparents. And then let us pray another version that speaks to many of our longings and understandings today. Oh God, Community congregation on their Tuesdays being in Paris. And they were having a, a tea, a fundraiser for their church. They didn't have a nice club, I believe. But they had a nice tea and a raffle over there. And it was fun to see our sister church that have supported us and supported our camp all these years. Now is the time when we pass the peace as an act of forgiveness and reconciliation. Jesus told his disciples that before they come to be reconciled with God, they should be first reconciled with one another. And so during this time of sharing God, Christ's peace, you are encouraged to seek and to offer forgiveness. When we turn to those around us with the greeting, may the peace of Christ be with you, respond and with you also. We symbolize our unity, even in the midst of division. When we pass the peace, we practice God's call to make every effort to maintain the bond of peace. Let us wave our peace to each other. May the peace of Christ be with you. And the table will be wide, and the welcome will be wide, and the arms will open wide to gather us in, and our hearts will open wide to receive, and we will come as children who trust there is enough, and we will come unhindered and free, and our aching will be met with bread, and our sorrow will be met with wine, and we will open our hands to the feast without shame. And we will turn toward each other without fear. And we will give up our appetite for despair. And we will taste and know of delight. And we will become bread for a hungering world. And we will become drink for those who thirst. And the blessed will become the blessing. And everywhere will be the feast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now we'll pause because we're going to have our people online. We'll go ahead and get their elements.
beginning a new covenant of love and together. Mm -hmm. and let's say together our unison prayer. Holy God, we have eaten the bread and we have been touched by your spirit and we are there. Still speaking, God, as we look from this place to be your church in the world, may the boldness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us and may the gentleness of your spirit And now our last song. It's just fun. <laughs> and it's um and it's easy. So hopefully you will just catch on and sing along. Man, I'm thankful to Jamie for introducing me to this song. I asked him first, he could he'd come and play this for us, but he couldn't come and speak. So <laughs> We are living in great danger. We are washed by the very 
to be as you are, for you are the gift. May you truly know that you're lovable and loved as you are. Amen. And now we gather for our all of you. Well, then they can go have a look there. Okay, we're good. All right. Come on. Where are we going? We're going to wait for you. Come on. Come
That was good. Ruth, we can be a favorite. Oh, yeah. Send her rather than Jen.